At one time, it was commonplace for an audience to gather to watch a good old-fashioned hanging. While hanging is a tried-and-true method of execution, there are things out there that are just a tad bit messier. Death by sawing. Yes, it just might be exactly what you're thinking. Exact details of its practice remain shrouded in mystery, but it's said that sawing was an execution method used in a number of different areas of the world. One such event occurred in Morocco, where a man accused as a rebel against the Moroccan emperor was captured. The emperor fetched his chief carpenter and asked him a question. He asked if his saws could cut a man's body in two. Sure enough, replied the carpenter, it was then decided that the rebel would die at the edge of the saw's toothed blade. The rebel was fetched from his place in prison, escorted to the public square, and was executed in one of the most horrific ways possible. You see, sawing has the potential to be so much more than just removing a limb or cutting a man through the middle. Some were doomed to a fate much like the rebel was that day. In some places, such as Asia, the sawing would take place from the top of the head downward. There would be pain and fear, but it wouldn't last, and others knew this so they would order that the victim be strung up, upside down. The saw would be held by two men, one on each side, and would be dragged back and forth, starting between the victim's legs and sawing downwards towards the head. This ensured that not only would the saw not kill the person immediately by destroying the brain, but the extra blood flow to the head would keep the victim conscious. It was said that the rebel was still conscious even as the saw got past his navel. Emperor Caligula counted sawing as one of his favorite forms of execution, and he would often watch it while he ate. He referred to it as an appetizer. <laughs> Scaphism, a Persian form of execution, or as their enemies like to call it, torturous death. For this method, the Persians were often referred to as barbarians. Scaphism was seen as such a horrible way to die due to the fact that unlike beheading or hanging, it wasn't over very quickly at all. Scaphism was achieved in one of two ways. It was often simply referred to as the boats, as two identical boats were used in the process. But also at times, a hollowed out tree would suffice as well. The poor soul sentenced to die would be forced either either into the hollow between the two boats or into a hollowed out tree and forced to have their hands, feet, and head sticking out. The Native Americans often used this tactic to execute people as well. However, this is where it ended. Leave the person out in the elements to die of exposure or starvation. The Persians went further though to ensure that the experience be that much more devastating. They would see to it that the victim was force-fed milk and honey in order to produce a bowel movement. If the person would refuse to eat, they would have their eyes pricked until the victim would forfeit their struggle. Milk and honey would be wiped onto the person's eyes, in their ears, and on genitals and exposed flesh, and they would be left within a putrid swamp to the nightmare that awaited them. Being overfed the way they were served two purposes. One was to prolong the victim's lifespan, and this was for a very specific reason, which ties into the second purpose, insects. The bowel movements would become so immense from the milk and honey that they would fill their improvised container with excrement. The sweetness of the honey plus the smell of feces would attract insects, which would begin by burrowing into exposed flesh and work their way inside the body, viciously gnawing at the eyes, ears, and other vital areas. The vermin would invade the victim's organs, carving pathways into the bowels and intestines where they would find new homes. It would be this way for days, weeks, until the victim finally were to succumb within a prison of festering, rotten excrement. One wouldn't even hear their own final thoughts over the buzzing, scratching, and chewing that droned from inside the wood. One particular victim was noted to have taken 17 days to fully die. 
Quite sadistic to take something as gruesome as an execution and turn it into a form of entertainment. No such form of execution reaches this level quite like the Brazen Bull. The work of art, as much as it was a device of execution, the Brazen Bull was designed by the ancient Greeks as a hollow statue of a bull made entirely of bronze, with a door on one side. The statue was the size of an actual bull, with an acoustic apparatus connecting from the chamber in the bull's body out of the bull's mouth and nostrils, which would change the sound of screams into the sounds of a bull. A victim would be forced inside of the statue and locked in. A fire was set beneath the bull's belly, causing the metal to heat. The victim, trapped within a prison of bronze, would roast to death. Their screams converted to the bellowing of a bull for the entertainment of all. Phalaris the Tyrant was said to have used this form of execution very widely on his enemies, so much so that even its inventor wasn't safe. Perilos of Athens, a bronze worker, constructed the brazen bull for the tyrant and described its unique feature to him. He said, his screams will come to you through the pipes as the tenderest, most pathetic, most melodious of bellowings. Even the tyrant was disgusted by the man's words and requested that he demonstrate how the acoustic apparatus worked. Perilos crawled inside of the bull only to have the door shut and locked behind him. A fire was promptly ignited, and Perilos's screams became very real. The story goes that he was pulled out of the bull before he died, only to be thrown from a cliff to his death. Regardless of the disgust Phalaris felt for the device, he found great value in it anyway. But in sweet, sweet irony, the tyrant was eventually overthrown by an uprising for his excessive cruelty and acts of cannibalism against newborn babies. He was thrown inside his own brazen bull, and the door locked behind him. The tyrant roasted alive while the crowds cheered over the bellowing of the great bronze bull. Interesting how these devices can make you fear death, but can eventually make you beg for it. That's all for now. Remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. I'm Rob Dyke, and I'll see you next Wednesday, so don't forget to subscribe, because you won't want to miss it.